Welcome to our episode of Revenue Chat. Best-selling author Chris Kennedy is quite the phenomenon. He self-publishes his own books and sells them hand over fist with 40,000 copies sold last year alone. Chris is so successful that he wrote a book and helps aspiring authors get their books written and sold. His big dream is to sell a million copies and he's well on his way. We're going to chat on how to help get your book out of your head, into stores, and sold next on Revenue Chat. Hi, everyone. This is Tony Gerso with Revenue Chat, brought to you by the book, Easy Sales Procedures. With us, we have multiple best-selling author Chris Kennedy, who's quite the sensation. He self-publishes his own books and sells them like hotcakes. With over 40,000 copies sold last year alone, Chris has the system down so well that he wrote a book on how to help aspiring authors get their books written and sold. A list of some of his best-selling books are Janissaries, which has over 18,000 copies sold. When the Gods Aren't Gods, with 12,000 copies sold. Terra Stands Alone, with 8,000 copies sold. Red Tide, The Chinese Invasion of Seattle, over 5,000 copies sold. That is amazing for a do-it-yourself. The name of Chris's book to help authors is Self-Publishing for Profit. That says it all. Chris's site is chriskennedypublishing.com. If you ever wrote a book, or if you ever want to write a book, sit down and take some notes. All right. Get ready for Chris to teach you his proven self-publishing method. The class has started. Everyone, please be seated. Hello, Chris. How are you? Hey, Tony. I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for joining us. It's very much a pleasure to have someone so distinguished as you on our show. Well, hey, thanks for having me. I I don't know about distinguished, but uh, I'll try and do my best. I had a feeling you were going to comment on that. And the reason I I say that is for someone to self-publish and have so many copies of his books sold is truly a phenomenon. I know I have produce my own books. I have a publisher. I know what it takes to get a book sold. And I know that there's a very small percentage of people. I don't know the exact number. Maybe it it used to be 1% sold anywhere over a thousand copies, you know, in their lifetime. The the volume of books sold for, especially a self-published author, the statistics aren't very good and you have defied the odds. So yes, my friend, you are distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, there is something to be said about that. Uh, I, I think you're pretty close with some of the, the statistics. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's only 1%, uh, but, but certainly um, those kind of numbers put me into the top 10%, I believe. So yeah, it, uh, I've, I've done very well. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to sharing all of that and, and how I did it and, Uh, those types of things with your audience. Very cool. Now, while I mentioned some of your book sales history, Chris, perhaps you'd like to fill us in a little more on your roots and how you became an expert in this field. So please tell us, how did it all start for you? Well, it's it's a long story that I'll try and make really short. Um, Most people you know, that that write have always wanted to be a writer. Uh, I read somewhere one time that 81% of people have a story they want to tell. Uh, I was always one of the the 19%. I never had a story. It wasn't something that I ever aspired to. Um, And and one day I was driving home from work, and some of the things I had seen uh, while I was there all kind of gelled into a story. And I thought, wow, you know, I I should write that down. And I, I said, well, you know, what What would I do with it? I, I don't know any agents. I don't know anything. I, I don't know. Um, and I, I talked myself out of it. And I got home, and my wife said, hey, dinner's going to be a little late. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just sit down and write some of that. So I, I started writing, and, and my wife said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, I'm writing a story. And she said, no, really, what are you doing? And I said, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm writing a story. And, and that's that's how far outside of anything I'd ever done um, you know, with writing it was. Um, so I wrote it. It, it took me uh, several weeks, and um, I finished it up, and I was like, wow, you know, this is great. I need to do something with it. Uh, what do you do? Oh, you send it to agents. Um, so I queried, I don't know, probably 75 or 80 different agents, and most of them didn't even bother to uh, reply with a, no, we don't want it. 
Um, and I said, well, gee, you know, I spent all this time, you know, writing this. I, I need to do something with it. And I had heard about this whole indie publishing, self-publishing thing, and I thought, you know, wow, that would be great. So I, I Google searched it, and, and, oh, my gosh, there is just so much information. Um, I, I realized very quickly that, you know, I, I needed a plan. And I had been in the military for 20 years, so planning was something I could do. Um, and I, I built a plan for taking the book through the editing, the cover, the blurb, you know, all of the, the same processes that a traditional publisher would use, um, and, and got it all ready to go. And I loaded it up onto Amazon, and, and I think probably the, the absolute hardest thing that I've ever done in my life was, was hit the publish button. You know, the, the cursor hung over it, and, you know, I, I wanted to push it so badly, but, but I knew as soon as I did, all of my friends would – would know that I was a fraud, and you know, because I I didn't know anybody in the industry. I I didn't have an English major. I I didn't have all of those things that that I thought people had to have and and had to do in order to be a, a successful author. Um, and and so I did the the one thing that you know probably uh, very few people would do. Uh, I pushed the button, um, and, and then a, and then a funny thing happened. People bought it. And then people bought more, and I said, well, gee, I, I need to do this again. So I published the second book in the series, and, and people bought that. And, and then I said, you know, I, I really want to try my hand at science fiction. So I, I turned the characters into a, a sci-fi book, and and then, it, you know, sales really skyrocketed. Rocketed and, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, look at this, I'm, I'm an author. Um, and and it's, it's really been a, an interesting journey. But but very uh, very fulfilling. I've, I've really enjoyed the ride, and and I'm really enjoying writing um, something that I, I never thought I would. Um, and and I think that it really gives me a, a different perspective on life. I I see stories in everything now, where before I didn't have a story. Now now I see stories everywhere. And and uh, my wife asked me one day, you know, I, I said. Hey, you know, I once I finish this story and, and that other thing, then I want to go ahead and write a story about this. And she said, "How many stories do you have in your head right now?" And, and I started counting, you know, uh, uh, seventeen. And, and she said, "How many people are in there with you right now?" <laughs> so it, it, it's something that has really um, been transformative in my life. You know, it's it's. Um, it really has changed the way I, I look at, at things and the way I do things, and, and it's all been for the better. It's It's been great. Wow, very impressive, Chris. I love it. I'm very impressed the fact it appears you really never had that goal originally of being an author. It's not something you aspire to. It's something you, for you, was it quite like an afterthought, like, Oh, I've got this cool story. Maybe I should write it. <laughs> yeah, I'm in- and and that's kind of how I um, how I, I talk about myself. I'm I'm the accidental author. You know, it, it wasn't something that was ever planned. It it just kind of happened. Um, you know, I I didn't have anybody leading me along. I didn't have anybody giving me pointers. Um, I I basically figured it all out on myself. I figured it all out by myself. Um, you know, in in sort of an accidental sort of way. It. it all of a sudden, there was a story, and, and I needed to do something with it. So, you know, it's it's been very good to me, and, and you know, my give back is to, to try and help others. Um, you know, it, it really happened at a time where I needed it. Uh, I had lost my job for uh, about nine months, and, you know, finances were really bad, and I was I was looking at going under, and, and uh, this really kind of saved me. So it was it was a blessing. That is so cool. That is very heartwarming. Chris, how do you find the books in your head? Well, that's always like I, impressed me. Like, like I said, it it kind of is something where I see stories all the time now, and and I'm I'm working on uh, a science fiction book, and and it's funny, just things that I'll hear in conversation um, will will work very well into the story. Um, we were talking at, at work yesterday about um, you know a project that's going on, and it really seems to be a moving target for what we need to do with it. And and somebody said, well, you know, you can hit a moving target, but it's a lot harder to nail a hologram to a wall. And I went, wow, that's kind of neat. I need to use that, you know, and, and wrote that down. <laughs> and, and it's going to work its way into a book just because I love that turn of phrase. 
Um, and, and that's really how a lot, of, a lot of different stories happen, just things that occur in the normal, you know, my normal daily life. I'm able to transition into the story. And, and you know, the, the best part about telling stories is making it relatable to people, about people. And, you know, so when you bring in real life, you already have that, that realism that, um, you know, that people are looking for in a story. That's cool. When you write a story, do you work out your characters and who they are? Do you work out what they do and what type of personalities they have, or do you just start writing and just kind of figure it on the on the go? I am a bit of a pantser. Uh, you know, I, I generally write by the seat of my pants. Um, as far as the story goes, with regard to the characters, usually I know exactly who the characters are and, and who I want them to be. Um, and, and how they're going to play into the story. Um, but I, I may not know exactly where the story is going at all times. Uh, usually, I well, not usually, every, every story I've written, I've had a, a beginning, um, and I know where I want it to get to at the end, and, and I have certain highlights that I need to hit along the way. But, but how I get there, I kind of let just free flow, and, and that's taken me in some neat, um, some neat directions sometimes. Um, there, there was one time I was going along and all of a sudden one of the, the main characters that I thought was a good guy, all of a sudden I realized he was not, um, you know, and, in, in not having everything written down where you have to know what you're doing at all moments, um, is, is very freeing for me. I, I really like doing it that way, um, because it lets the back of my brain just kind of work through things and, and figure out the best way to do, uh, to, to write the story. Um, another thing about characters, um, some of the characters I have are, are pre-made uh, because I let people be red shirts in my books. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept of red shirt, but it, it comes from uh, the old Star Trek uh, where the guys that wore the red shirts were always the ones that beamed down and then got killed. Um, and I, I let people be red shirts in my books. Uh, they can sign up on the website and, and I'll put them in. Um, you know, and, and I'll use their real name, and uh, as much as they want to tell me about themselves, I'll, I'll put into the story. So, you know, if, if somebody in real life is into uh, or works in the IT industry, I'll make them an, an IT smart guy in, in the story so that, you know, when they read it, they'll, they'll be able to see a little bit of themselves, um, you know, in the character. And, you know, I had one guy that said, you know, I don't, I don't swear in real life. And I write stories about military, and, you know, they swear from time to time, but this one guy didn't. You know, so some of the, some of the characters are, are real-life people, and, and I try to mirror them as much as possible on, you know, the, the person that said they'd like to be in the book. That is very cool. Uh, very similar when I write, I have a character, I have a personality, and I just let him run. Because I really don't know sometimes where that character is going to wind up during the book, so I. But I totally understand it. it it's very, very cool, very inspiring, and, and, and creative to hear. Some, sometimes you need to know what you know everything about them because you know you need them to act a certain way, do a certain thing, and and that's great. Um, sometimes you know it's it's a matter of exploration as well because you know the the reader isn't going to know everything up front. You know, a lot of times I'm I'm learning about the person and what I need them to be, uh, where I I'm able to work out their backstory as as I go along, and 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 I like that. I I think that's fun. Cool. I totally relate to that. Now, Chris, what would you say is the most important quality for being a successful self-published author? Well, I I think that it is pretty much the same as as being you know, successful at, at most of the things in life, and, and that's dedication. You know, if, if you want to be good at something, you have to work at it. Uh, if you want to be successful at self-publishing, you need to continue to develop yourself both as uh, an author and as a business person. Um, the, the business person is, is going to get you the short-term profits in how you market things and, and how you edit and, and take your book through all of the processes that it needs to go through. Um, but, you know, being a good writer is what's going to keep people coming back. You know, you can get people to buy the first book with a, a flashy cover or a great blurb, 
but if the inside isn't any good, they're not going to come back. So you need to be dedicated in developing yourself as well as in as a re, as a writer, uh, as well as developing yourself as a businessman and uh, or businesswoman, and and how you go about marketing yourself and branding yourself and uh, getting getting yourself out there. Because these days, um, I think uh, there's you know hundreds of thousands. I've I've heard as many as eight hundred thousand new books on Amazon every year. So it's not a matter of just writing a great book. It's really more a matter of being found um, and, and getting yourself above the clutter where people can find you. You know, just there's so many books. If you can't get found, no one's going to buy it. So you need to be a great business person so that you can get that visibility, and then you need to be a great writer so you can keep it. Well said, Well said. What would be your best tip for someone starting out as a self-published author? I will give you my absolute best tip that probably 90% of the people get wrong, and it is uh, nearly unrecoverable from, Um, and, and here it is. Most people will write a book, and they're focused on the book. They're, they're, you know, just truly dedicated on making it the best they can be. They they work hard on it. They get it well edited. They get a great cover. They get, you know, a great blurb on the back, and they put it out, and they go, here's my book, and and nobody's there to buy it. And, and it doesn't sell right away, and they go, oh, you know, I must not be a good author. No one wants this book. And it really has nothing to do with how good an author you are. It has to do with how good a marketer you are. And my tip is you don't start marketing a book right when you release it. You actually need to start marketing your book four to six months ahead of time. And here's why. We, you know, as as human beings, like to do business with people that we know, like, and trust. Um, And if you are a brand-new author – Nobody knows you, nobody knows whether they can like you, and certainly nobody knows if they can trust you. You know, you don't have a, a, a body of work out there that people can look at. You don't have any reviews. You don't have any of the things that, that develop trust. So you put out your book and you're trying to get people interested in it, but, you know, it's, it's just one more book out of, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands in your genre. So people aren't, aren't willing to take that chance. You know, you may be great. But but you may not, whereas these ones over here, you know, have reviews and they're all five star and they look great. And, you know, it's the same thing as is what you've got. But but they have the social proof. So they go and buy that book. Here's what you need to do. You need to start marketing ahead of time, like I said. And what you do is you start building up a a following um, generally on social media because it's free. Um, you know, you can start interacting with people on, on other authors' blogs, um, and it's important to start getting your name out there. Uh, generally, two of the easiest ones to use are Facebook and Twitter. Um, those are the two that I use predominantly, um, and I, I, wouldn't, I would not recommend using really more than two. I would, I would build a website and then have those two social media. You know, if, if one of them doesn't work for you for some reason, that's fine. Do something else. But you have to remember that primarily you're a writer and you need to spend most of your time writing rather than uh, out there marketing. Um, but you do need to start marketing and you do need to start building up this, this base of people, this base of followers, um, so that when you know, the book comes out, you can say, hey, um, you know, I know I've been talking about this book for several months. It's now out, and I'd really appreciate it if you'd take a look. And is everybody that you're, you know, in your following going to go and buy it? No, they're not. But some will because they know you. Uh, they know that they can trust you. You've, you've developed that relationship with them. And they'll go out and buy it. Um, and, and you say, hey, you know, if you like it, I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you write a review when you're done. Um, and once again, is everybody going to do that? No, they're not. But some will because you have developed that relationship, and and that's how you start getting that initial, um, you know, get the the initial ball rolling, where you start developing some of those sales and uh, the reviews and and the other things that are necessary for Amazon to pick your book up and start marketing it uh, themselves. 
And and I'll tell you, Amazon's got a lot more money to market than I do. So anytime I can get mar- you know, get Amazon to do my marketing for me, I absolutely want to. Um, you know, they have emails they send out. They they put your book with the uh, down at the bottom where it says people that bought this also bought that. You know, and they start putting your cover out there where people can find it. You know, it's it's not just a, a little blurb somewhere that you know people have to look for to find. It's now out there where they see it all the time. Um, so so that uh, is is a long answer, but the the best tip I can give you is don't wait till your book launches to start marketing. Market it four to six months prior. That's a very thorough answer and very appreciated. And <laughs> I love it. It's but, so true. But, but, but truly, that, that, is, that is the one thing that I see people you know, not do over and over and over. And, and their book comes out, and you know, I, I've, I've looked at the books, and you know, they've got a great cover, and I've, I've read through them. And I'm like, wow, this is a great book. And the, they said, they, authors tell me, no, it, it can't be a good book because nobody bought it. And, you know, it's it's not a matter of it being a good book or a bad book. It's all a matter of being found. Um, and if if you don't get found, you don't get sales. Um, so, you know, the the whole starting early really is, is key um, to, to having any sort of sales at all. I love it. And the starting early also, Chris, is in the building of one's social media and following and getting to know people and where to go and where to chat and getting people to know you, you just don't come out, Johnny come lately. Hey everybody, here I am. I got a book. No, it's yeah. Here, here, buy my book here. You don't know me buy my book here. You don't know me buy my book, you know, and, and people do that and, and it turns everyone off. You know, the, the, the following that you might have on social media that, you know, just looks at that and goes, oh, I, I don't know that I want to follow this person anymore. I don't know really know them, and all they're doing is being salesy and there, eh, you know. And, and people start people start dumping you. Um, so you know, it's it's really a matter of building relationships. You know, if if the first time you talk to somebody, you're you're approaching them with your hat in your hand, going here, give me money. Um, generally, it's not going to work out well for you. And that's, you know, that's, that's not just writing. That's anything in life. You know, it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you don't know somebody and you walk up and go, here, buy my stuff, um, most people are going to go, no, thanks, and turn and walk away. Um, relationships are, are truly key to, um, you know, success as, as an author. Awesome. Correct. Right on point. Chris, how much does it cost to self-publish a book? It costs as much as you want it to. Um, and I, I say that, and uh, it, you, can, you can spend absolutely nothing, and you can spend twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Uh, typically, I like to keep myself down toward the zero end um, because I don't have twenty five dollars or $30,000 to just go blow. Um, because spend $25,000, you then have to make that up in sales. And you know if you're if you're selling ebooks and it's you're selling it for three ninety nine you're making uh two eighty a book you know it takes an awful long time to to make up twenty five thousand dollars at uh two dollars and eighty cents a book um i would i would say that's uh you know about uh uh you need about a thousand of them you know uh actually ten thousand of them in order to get there so I like to try and keep it as cheap as possible. Um, but there are certain things that, that it really does pay for you to spend some money on. Um, and and the, the one key thing is you need to have a great cover. Um, I've, I've read that uh, 53% of sales are based on the cover alone. So, you know, if, if you don't uh, have a great cover, you're, you're, you're killing your sales. And it, you can see that just, you know, anytime you ever walk through Barnes & Noble or, or flip through Amazon, you know, you just kind of walk down the aisle looking, 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 and then you see that one that catches your eye. That's the one that pick that you pick up. Um, if your cover isn't good enough that it gets somebody to pick it up, you may have the best book, you may have the best blurb. It, it doesn't matter what it says on the inside because the outside has already turned people off. Um, so it's it's important to have a great cover and if you are not a graphic designer or a graphic artist, 
you know, you, you really have to pay to have somebody do it so that it looks it looks professional. Because if your cover doesn't look professional, um, you know, people aren't going to want to buy it. You're, you're losing that trust that we talked about um, right from the start because they look at it and they go, oh, wow, that, that doesn't look very good. This person must not be, um, you know, must not be very professional. And, and you all, I'm sure you've heard, you know, people don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover. But, but people do. People absolutely judge books by their cover. And if you don't have a great cover, people aren't going to pick it up. There are a number of ways that you can get good covers uh, fairly inexpensive. Um, I generally pay about $300 for, for mine. Uh, I use a service uh, typically called 99designs. Um, which is 99designs.com, and it's the number 99 followed by designs.com. Um, you know, you can uh, post what you're doing on there, and it's a place where graphic designers come, um, and, and you run a contest for who's going to uh, design the, the cover for your book, and whoever is the winner ends up getting paid. Um, you know, so that's that's one way to do it fairly cheaply. There are other places that... Uh, you can get a book cover done um, for you know that much or less. You can go to Fiverr and have somebody work on it. Um, the one thing that I would I would tell everyone is that if you are doing you know you're you're contracting out your cover, that does not release you from the responsibility of it. You know you need to know what is a good cover for your genre. You know, before you start, you know, working on your cover, go to Barnes and Noble, go to Amazon, flip through the the covers in your genre and see what they look like because they all have a certain feel. You know, if you're writing sci-fi, it it needs to have a kind of a space look. Uh, if you're writing romance, you want a, a hunk on the cover. You know, something to catch the ladies' eyes. You know, so you need to know what your cover should look like uh, so that as you're designing it, you design it as something that is going to work for your genre. Uh, in addition to the cover, um, editing is, is another thing that is worth every penny that you spend on it. Uh, there are also ways of, of doing edit, getting editing done without paying a lot of money. Um, if, you, if you don't have time but you have money, you can pay to get it done. Uh, if you don't have money but you have time, there are ways that uh, you can help, you know, you can edit somebody else's book if they'll edit yours. Uh, there are critique circles. There are uh, literary clubs in, in every city, you know, in the U.S. and abroad. You know, so there are ways that, you know, you can get editing done cheaply um, or, you know, you can spend as much as you want on it. Those are the two things that, that I think really uh, are worth spending money on. Uh, I don't spend uh, much money, if, if at all, on uh, marketing or any of the other things uh, I do my own uh, formatting, which is easy. You just get a blank uh, from online. You know, there are plenty of places that, that sell a uh, blank book, and you just copy your story into it. Um, you know, and there, there are ways of doing everything else that you need to for free. Uh, so typically I, I end up spending generally, uh, it depends, between three and $500 uh, per book. Um, you know, by the time you throw everything in there, cover and ISBN, uh, some editing, things like that, generally three to five hundred dollars. You can pay a lot more, you can pay less. Uh, I personally wouldn't pay any less because I want to make sure I have a good cover. Wow, those are really good points, Chris. Thank you very much. Really excellent. Love it. And I completely agree with them. Now, can you tell us, please, a little bit more about getting this, the book sold once it's published? Getting like the book successful sold once for it's you, published. A little bit more of what's working and so forth. You mentioned your social media, of course, but anything else on that, please? Sure, uh, absolutely. Um, one of the things that works really well for me, um, you know, it's once – once the book is published and, and is out there, you know, I, I will do social media. Uh, periodically, I will do some, some promotions and, and put a little bit of money into advertising. Uh, I will also do some advertising on Amazon, um, you know, going into the uh, KDP Select program, and, and there are pro, uh, different promotions you can run there. Um, but the, the one big thing that I'll do that really helps get uh, the initial sales 
is to do a book launch. Um, and I, I generally will set up a whole book launch team. And, and people say, oh, well, what's a book launch team? What's that? Um, generally, it's about 10, anywhere between 10 and 20 uh, readers um, that that like what I write and you know have read my books and and I know are going to like what I'm writing and I'll I'll get them together and I'll say okay you know here's here's the way it's going to work uh, about two to three weeks before the book comes out I will send you an advanced copy um, I send them an ebook um, and and they need to read it before the book is published then when the book is published uh, as soon as it's out there they go and they uh, they start writing reviews. Um, you know, for the, the yearly copy, uh, all I ask them to do is write a review um, and then click on the Yes, This Was Helpful button on the other people's reviews. Um, and, and I don't ask them, you know, to, to lie or to, you know, do anything uh, deceitful. I just say, hey, you know, do an honest review. If you don't like the book, then don't don't write a review, please. But, you know, if you do, please write a review. And, you know, so I'll get uh, generally 10 to 13 reviews, um, you know, on the first couple days. And, and that helps get that initial jump into Amazon. You know, there, there are people that, you know, when they see the reviews popping up and uh, the, the story goes live, you know, you'll get, you'll get some, some purchases. And, and then as the other reviews come in, it, it generates more interest and um, it will get into Amazon's uh, marketing system, like I already mentioned before, uh, that system, you know, uh, is based on a thing called the algorithm, um, and, and nobody really knows what the algorithm looks for. It's a proprietary secret that Amazon absolutely will not tell anyone. Um, but but most people think it's based on three things: um, sales, obviously, because Amazon's in the business of selling things, and and they want to sell things that sell well. So if, if you get some sales, that's great. Uh, it also looks at reviews, uh, the number of four- and five-star reviews versus the number of one and two. And if you get a bunch of four- and five-star reviews, that gives you not only the, the social credibility to readers, it also gives you the credibility to Amazon that you know the product you're selling is high quality. So they don't have to worry as much about uh, a lot of returns, You know, people buying it and then going, oh, no, I don't want it. Um, which which Amazon doesn't want returns, you know that's that's not good for business. Um, and then the uh, the number of people that click on uh, on a review, there's a little button at the bottom that says, "Was this review helpful? Yes or no?" Um, and and if you click on the yes on the four and five star um, reviews, that that makes it even more uh, believable to Amazon. So you know those three things get get crunched up into Amazon's algorithm and. They take your book versus the other books and in your genre and look at you know what what books are building sales and if you've got those three things, then they start marketing your book for you and they'll send it out to you know say your book is a science fiction book. Um, everybody that buys science fiction books, Amazon knows, hey, they like science fiction books. So periodically they send them you know an email that says, hey, these are these are the books that are hot in sci-fi right now. Um, and, and they'll put your, you know, your book on that list. All of a sudden, now they're sending out your title to, you know, tens of thousands of people. You know, that's that's better than most people can do um, on their own. And so that's great. And that's exactly what you want. Um, so having a book launch team to give you the initial reviews that you need, um, and and to start talking about your book, um, I think really is is critical to driving good sales. Awesome. Fabulous points. Thank you so much. Very informative. I like it. In terms of strategy, which do you do? Do you go for the physically printed book that someone has to get shipped in the mail? Do you go for the ebook, or do you go for both? Can you comment on that, please? Sure. Um, absolutely. I, I like to try and get my books out um, where every reader can find them. And, you know, every reader is a little different. Some some readers like print, some like ebooks, some like audiobooks. So I want my books to be available in all three formats, um, and I, I put them out. You know, initially they come out as a uh, as an ebook and a print copy, um, and then the audiobook generally follows um, within three or four weeks as quickly as my narrator can get to it. Um, 
typically uh, I sell uh, about 89% of my books are um, e-books, about 8% are audio, and about 3% are print. Um, I was I was very surprised to see that you know audio books outsell print by about three to one, um, but a lot of my friends have said that that's you know what they do too. So uh, there is a big audio market out there that a lot of people don't ever try and tap into. Um, as far as the the formats that I put it out in, um, you know I, I will put um, the ebook on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Uh, usually I'll, I'll put it on Draft to Digital. Um, which is a um, a distributor that will send it out to all of the the minor different ebook marketers. Um, that way, I don't have to go to you know 15 other sites and load it all up there on each one. They'll go ahead and do that for me. Um, as far as the the print goes, print these days is all about print on demand. Uh, gone are the days where you have to do a print run of of 5,000 books, and now you've got boxes and boxes of books in your garage, and your wife hates you because the, you're filling up the the office with with all these boxes. Um, with print on demand, you just load your your for, your book onto a uh, a site, um, either Create Space or Ingram Spark. Um, some people use Lulu, and then um, they will. Um, print a copy whenever anyone wants to buy one. Um, they, I use CreateSpace, uh, which is easy. It's a subsidiary of Amazon. Uh, as soon as I get it loaded on uh, CreateSpace and it's approved, within a couple hours it will automatically just find its way to Amazon and it will merge right in with the ebook. so that, you know, on that page on Amazon people can select uh, the ebook uh, or the print book. And, and I didn't have to do anything to get it there. Um, you know, by using Create Space, it just shows right up and merges in. Uh, I use ACX, uh, which is Audiobook Creation Exchange, uh, for putting my audiobooks in. Uh, that's ACX.com. Uh, that is also a subsidiary of Amazon. So once it's approved, you know, within a couple hours, it works its way in and, and merges right in to the same page that already has the, the ebook and the print book. And now all three are available, and it's transparent to the uh, to the reader. You know, the reader selects the the book online uh, on Amazon and is given the choice. You know, one, two, three. Do you want an ebook, print book, or audio book? And if they say ebook, Amazon just ships them the you know the digital file. Uh, if they say print, then uh, Amazon goes to uh, Create Space and says, Hey, Create Space, go ahead and print one copy of the book and send it to this person. And if they want an audio book, Amazon talks to ACX and says, print one of these and send it to this person. And it, it all works out very well. Um, and, and I don't have to chase, you know, sending sending books in the mail and worry about postage and uh, fulfillment and, and all of those things. Amazon does it all for me. Um, you know, they, they're all set up to do it, and, and it just works out better for me that way. Uh, some people like to be in the fulfillment business. If you are, you know, you're you're getting all of your uh, sales information. You know, you know the names of people that are buying it, their email address, you know, all that stuff. Um, but I don't have time to be mailing books to people, so I let Amazon do that for me. Wow, I like it. Very impressive. Excellent tips. Excellent, excellent. Any other marketing tips? Those are quite those are quite good. Um, those, again, those, are, those are really the best ones that I have. Um, you know, after after that, um, there's there's a lot of trial and error because um, it, it marketing a book works differently for every single author, um, and and that's due to a, a variety of different reasons. Um, you know, one is branding, uh, one is the genre. Uh, for example, um, romance books. Uh, typically, I, I hear, I don't write romance books, so I don't know, this is hearsay, um, but I generally don't sell a lot of books on Apple iTunes. Uh, I hear, however, that romance sells very well on that. So, you know, people that write romance are, are you know, um, be, you know, behooves them to, to spend some time there and, and build a following there. Um, romance books also work very well uh, for Pinterest. Um, why is that? That's because 81% of the, the users of the Pinterest uh, social media site are women. 
Um, so if you're marketing something that works well for women or something that works well in, in pictures, Pinterest is, is a site you want to be on, uh, maybe more so than, than Twitter. Um, maybe you want to do Facebook and Pinterest because you can, you know, get, get your covers on there with the, the hunky guys and the, the pretty women and, and draw some, some people in that way. You know, so there are different things that uh, work better for some people other than others, and, and really it's a matter of, of trial and error sometimes to see what works best for you. You know, I can, I can say what works for me, and, and I've already given you, you know, some of my best things. Um, but then it's a matter of getting out there and trying it and doing it. And, you know, if it works great, hey, do it again next time. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean you, you have to do it again. You know, try something else. Um, and, and even once the book's out there, you know, if, if it's not selling, try something new. Uh, you can put a new cover on it. You can put a new blurb on it. You know, you can do whatever you need to uh, to try and kickstart your sales. And, and that may mean taking it to... Um, another site, it may mean, you know, a, a variety of different things. And it's all a matter of, you know, not being afraid to try new things. Awesome points. Thanks so much for sharing all those. Those are excellent. Really, really good points. Love it. You see a lot of people that, you know, the, they'll put out they'll put out a book and, and if it doesn't immediately sell, they, they you know, they've got these great expectations. You know, I've, I've worked so hard on this that it must be a great book. And, and when it doesn't immediately sell, rather than doing some of the, the things that I just discussed, they just go, oh, I, I guess I'm not a good writer. Um, what I would tell people is, you know, if you don't get, you know, good sales immediately, which really is the norm, uh, getting great sales off the block is, is really more of the exception, not the rule. Um, you know, try some of those things I just talked about. Um, and, and the other thing you need to do, is write a second book um, because the more books you have out there, a, a lot of good things happen. Um, not only does a second book give you, um, you know, more chances to be found, you know, because you're in more places, um, it also does a lot of things for the mind of the reader. Um, if you have more than one book, you look like you are a professional author. You look like you are somebody that has credibility um, because, you know, you – if you're publishing, you know, continuing to publish, obviously you must be in it because you're a professional author. Um, it also, there is a, a thing in people's minds where we, we like authors, and, and once we find one, uh, we want to read all of their books. And if there's only one book out there, people are sometimes afraid to purchase it because they say, well, you know, I may like this author, and, and if, if I do, there's nothing else. You know, what am I going to do? I'll like this author and I'll want more, but there won't be anything. So they'll go try other authors that do have, you know, more books. And, you know, I, I have seen from my own personal sales, every time I release, you know, a book, it causes a spike in all of the ones that preceded it as well. Um, so getting, you know, writing more books is, is very powerful. And don't quit after one, quit after maybe five. If you haven't sold any by the end of five and you've tried everything I've told you, okay, there, there may be something else going on, and maybe you should give me a call and, and we can work it out. Here, here. And if you haven't sold many books, listen to this show again and again. And if you haven't sold many books, get with me as well, and I will help with the marketing because I'm very familiar with a lot of the sales and marketing aspects of books. Well, so, there yes. you go. Talk, talk to as, Tony about marketing and, and talk to me about the other stuff. I'm very happy um, to talk about that and share what, what I know. And as a matter of fact, what I'd like to do now is segue into a, something new, a new segment on Revenue Chat. I want to motivate and inspire. And what I did, Chris, is I pulled a few inspirational quotes from famous people about books. And okay. I'm going to, I'm going to read these out and I'd love to have your comments about them, all right? Okay, sounds great. Great. Here we go. First, there's just a couple. Ralph Waldo Emerson, and of course he is an American philosopher, lecturer and poet. He passed in 1882. His quote, "If we encounter a man of rare intellect, we should ask him what books he reads." I think that that is um certainly tells you a lot about the person um, and, and what they're trying to do with their life. 
Um, for example, um, a lot of the books that I read are on um, either how to become a better writer or how to become a better businessman because I want to be successful. Um, I also read books that are in my genre because I want to keep my, my finger on the pulse of what readers like. Um, you know, I, I need to know what they like so that I can, I don't want to write the same thing, but I want to write something similar and I want to do it in such a way that I look like a professional author. So I'm reading, uh, I read, uh, a variety of different blog, if, uh, blog issues every day, blog, you know, uh, on how to become a better writer and, and how to become a better businessman, you know, so I'm, I'm doing all of those things to try and make myself better. Um, you know, people that uh, aren't interested in that, you know, that's fine. You know, it, but it does tell something about the, the person, what books they read, uh, tells what they care about. Very excellent. Very intuitive. Cool. Next one is Oscar Wilde. He was an English writer, he passed in 1900. His quote, if one cannot enjoy reading a book over and over again, there is no use in reading it at all. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that uh, I'd agree with that one quite as much. Um, <laughs> just, mostly just because you know, with with all of the indie publishing these days, there are so many great books out there by all of these people that up until a few years ago never would have uh, you never would have been able to find. You know, up until the the start of you know self publishing and Amazon and um, you know, if you didn't have an agent, you weren't getting published. Um, if you didn't have a good agent that could sell the book to a publisher, you weren't getting published. So there were so many great books that just got killed because uh, they never got picked up. Um, but but now people are getting those books out there. And if you look at uh, the the top hundred or the top twenty in the different categories on Amazon, it's amazing how many of those are self published. And, and I will tell you that um, the number of self-published authors that are making a million dollars a year is more than the number of authors that are working for the big five publishers, um, and, and that's the same across the board. You know, the, the number of people, number of self-published authors making $250,000 a year is more than the number of traditionally published authors working for the big five. Um, so all of these, you know, there are so many great books out there. If if you read the same one over and over and over again, um, you're you're missing out on on some great stuff. Um, there are lots of great reads out there that I wish I had more hours in the day because I'd like to do more pleasure reading than I do right now. Um, just because there are so many great titles and great authors that that you can now find that you couldn't find in 1900 when he passed. You're absolutely right. Excellent points. Very excellent. Thank you. Next well, and, quote. You is, know, and, and, and I don't. You know, there there may be books that are so great that you know you want to read them over and over again, and and that's you know that's all fine and good. But I I I like having uh, I like having choice. And I do agree with you. I do agree with you. Very good. Okay. Next is Saint Thomas Aquinas, Italian philosopher, writer, and influential thinker of his age. He passed in 1274, and this one you're going to like. He His quote, beware of the person of one book. <laughs> yep, I, I, could, I could absolutely see that one. Um, and, and I think that what he was trying to say there was, you know, you, you need to keep an open mind on, on a lot of things. And, you know, he was, he was um, you know, as, as a priest, was he a priest? Yes. I, I don't, um, yes. I, I'm not sure if he was, you know, uh, a a priest or not. But but either way, you know, certainly the the Bible was very important to him. Um, it was it was the way he lived his life. Um, but but even he, who who went on to achieve sainthood, um, you know, knew that you needed to have an open mind and look at other things. And uh, you know, you never develop yourself if you only look at one thing. Um, life is a matter of continuing to grow. Uh, my my mom raised me as a lifelong learner, and and I would have it no other way. 
and the only way you can do that is to continue to to read new things and um, you know push yourself into new areas and and I think you know the the only way that you're going to become everything you want to be is to continue to grow and learn. Well Give said. me more books, more books. <laughs> do you hear that, audience? Do you hear that, everybody? <laughs> The, the public need more books from us. It is our duty to give them books. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, there are some readers that, that read a book a day, and, you know, somebody's got to satisfy those people, darn it. Um, you know, I, I, even as fast, I write pretty quickly. I, I can publish a book a quarter. But, you know, they're, they're reading a book a day or a book a week, so, you know, I need other people out there to, to fulfill their needs. We need help. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Love it, love it. Next is Henry David Thoreau. He was an American author, poet, philosopher. He passed in 1862. Here's a charming quote. He said, read the best books first, or you may not have a chance to read them at all. <laughs> well, that's that's certainly true. I, I want to know how you find out which is the best books, though. Uh, I wish I wish somebody had a way of doing that so, so that I could. Um, the thing is well, he though, had a, that everybody's everybody's different, so the book you like most isn't necessarily one that I'm going to like. So uh, I'd, I'd say keep reading and, and find the ones that you like. And, you know, that's what I was saying about uh, the author. You know, if you find an author you like, um, you're going to try and read all of theirs. So, you know, come read mine, I guess. <laughs> totally. You know. agree. Well, he came from a time period where you went to a library and you read the classics and mm -hmm. he was referring to reading those first so that because I believe life gets so busy sometimes you may not get all the chance later to do the pleasure reading that you want. So make sure you make sure you have your list, uh, your list there of what you're going to read hey, first. I, I agree. And, you know, if um, if you read the important ones first. Um, regardless of what is important to you, um, that'll help you be prepared for the ones that you read following. You know, if if you're looking at business books, for example, you know, you, you need to read a, a good primer first in order to be able to specialize into some other areas. Um, if you want to become a better writer, you know, you need to have a, a good solid, um, you know, a good solid basis to build on. So, you know, build, read, the, read the important ones first, and, and then you can specialize. Um, also, you know, people are living longer. Back, back then, they didn't live as long, so they had to read the, the, the good ones first. Um, but I think that reading the important ones first really opens your mind where you can understand and accept, um, you know, more information. Um, if you read the, the right ones first, um, you're better prepared for the ones that follow. Excellent response. So true. Right on point. Thank you on that. And the last quote, George Bernard Shaw. He was an Irish playwright who won both the Nobel Prize and an Oscar. He was very outspoken on politics and heavily influenced the theater culture. He passed in 1950. His quote, make it a rule never to give a child a book you would not read yourself. Well, I... I think that there's a lot of truth in that. You know, um, my wife uh, was, I was a uh, elementary school principal for five years, and my wife was my librarian. And she wouldn't put a book into uh, the library that she didn't read herself, which meant that she read an awful lot because, you know, she, she lived by that. And, and I think that that's very important because, um, especially these days, just like the um, advent of indie publishing and self-publishing lets you know all of these great authors you know get out there and get found, uh, it also lets a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that shouldn't be published get published because it's so easy. And um, you, you really want to uh, you you want to stimulate minds and and you stimulate children with good things, not with just ugh, crap. And, and there's an awful lot of that out there these days. So I, I would agree. You know, I, I think that the way my wife did it was, was spot on. You know, anything that, that went to her kids, and, and by her kids I mean the entire school, uh, she had read first. And, and if she had qualms about it, she'd talk with me. And um, a lot of times kids would come in and ask for books, and parents would ask for books. And, you know, she would always say, hey, 
uh, parent, before you recommend that to your kid, do you really know what's in it? Just just because it's popular right now doesn't mean it's a good book. And and we see that all the time. Um, you know, the the best the best books aren't always the ones get that get turned into movies or go viral. You know, it's a lot of times things that are are a lot less good. Um, I would I would hold up the Twilight series, um, which just continued to get worse and worse throughout it. Um, you know, you you really want to know what you're giving a child because you want to help form them. You know form them in a way that they become responsible adults and and they do that by reading you know things that that are going to make a good difference in them um not just crap so true excellent and well said well thank you that was fun chris thank you so much for your input <laughs> I, I don't know if it's well said if i use the word crap three times in a response but hey you know i uh, <laughs> I have other words for what some of that stuff is uh, based on my Navy heritage, and uh, I, I drew the line there and, and just went with crap. <laughs> there you go. That's acceptable. Thank you. And we're very close to wrapping up now. Is there anything else that you would like our audience to know about? Well, what what I would do is is I would tell everybody that, you know, if you have a book in your head, you got to get it out. You know, don't don't die with your story untold. These days, it's it's easier to get your your story out there than it's ever been in the history of mankind. Write your book. Um, you know, some people say, "Oh, well, my grammar's no good. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing." Oh, uh, you know, there's there's a litany of different things and and excuses people want to give you for why they can't. Um, what they really need is an excuse for why they can. They have a great story. They should tell it. You know, oh, my grammar's no good. Hey, guess what? That's what the editing process is for. Oh, well, I don't know about this. Well, hey, you know, you can catch it in editing. You can catch it with this. You can do this. You know, you can you can get into a critique circle where, you know, you critique other people's work, they critique yours, and, and you become a better author. You know, I came from a tradition where I had never written anything other than a, a – the longest thing I'd ever written was my doctoral dissertation – which I don't think anybody would ever read for pleasure, uh, even if people were paid large sums of money. Um, and, <laughs> and I came out with a book that you know sold 5,000 copies uh, with with me not knowing what I was doing. You know, I was I was fi- figuring it out as I went along. Um, you know, I didn't even read any of the books that are out on self-publishing. You know, I just tried to figure it out myself and uh, plan for what I needed. So what I would tell people is if you have a story, write it, because you can't do anything with it until it's written. Then once it's written, you know, you can take it through all of the things that uh, you need to to, to turn it into a, a good story and a good novel. Um, there's a, a variety of uh, sources out there you can use. Uh, you know, hey, you can even look at uh, my self-publishing for profit book if, if it came right down to that. Um, but but you got to write it first. If you don't write it, you're not an author. Uh, and people say, oh, you know, I, I really think I could do this if. Don't, don't do the if. Write the book, then worry about how you're going to get you know, through whatever that issue is. You can do it. Write the book. Well said. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I loved it. Insightful, inspirational, been stimulated on several points. I hope our audience really appreciate it. Some great points there, Chris. Thank you. I want to thank you very much. It's been wonderful and quite the pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Tony. I, I really enjoyed being here. Uh, hopefully uh, all of your listeners um, picked up something that they'll find useful and, and they'll now go write their book. Cool. It was great. Again, everyone, Chris's site is chriskennedypublishing.com. Check him out. He knows what he's talking about with over 40,000 books sold. All right. Well, thank you again. Stay tuned to our next show on Revenue Chat. We're going to have E. Selfie Taylor, founder of the Taylor Method, top-ranked financial advisor, agent, broker, entrepreneur, and keynote speaker. He's all about giving people the information to make educated decisions. He's accomplished a great deal in his career, but feels he's just getting started as he wants to make a huge impact in the lives of millions when all is said and done. He's writing his first book with the very befitting title, Rise to the Top. He's going to share his sales methodology and help you become better at finding your customers and getting the sale. 
on the next episode of Revenue Chat. This is Tony Gierso brought to you by Easy Sales Procedures. Get the book, Easy Sales Procedures, for you and all your business contacts at TonyDurso.com. All right. Until next time, and remember, you can make life better for yourself and everyone. Choose wisely. Hi, this is Tony Dierso, author of the new book, Easy Sales Procedures. You know, in my career, I've made impressive record-breaking sales forays into real estate, collectibles, insurance technology, and other varied industries. My accomplishments include raising $3.25 million in a six-month period. Now, despite what we've been told, sales is an art. There are sales procedures that can be applied precisely as a science. But in essence, it's truly an art. There are fundamentals that you need in place that will help you with your sales, marketing, and business. Get easy sales procedures to help put your business into proper perspective. You know, too many people seem to make sales complicated. Hey, it's easy. All you need are some basics. In three words, open, agree, and get. That's it. That's easysalesprocedures.com. This book will endow you with the simple truths at the core of being a sales master and also contains salesman training drills that when practiced demonstrate how to interest any person in anything. These simple procedures can be applied by anyone from any walk of life because in modern day society every person is involved in interesting or selling someone something. That's Easy Sales Procedures. Get your copies now at a low price from EasySalesProcedures.com. Order enough for all your employees, too. Here's to volume sales success for your life and business.